Hey, what's up, everybody? John Carpenter is a legend in Hollywood, or at least in the horror area of Hollywood. And today what I want to do is I want to rank my top 10 favorite John Carpenter movies from the worst to the best. So let's do this. So John Carpenter has a plethora of movies, uh, mostly horror movies, and in there you have a lot of hits, you have a lot of misses, a lot of duds, uh, a lot of movies that were misunderstood at the time that have gained a cult following, and a lot of movies that um, are still kind of misunderstood. He is an interesting director with a unique style, and with that he's brought a lot of great movies to us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rank my top 10 favorite John Carpenter movies. Uh, I'm going to start out at number 10 and go all the way down to number one. Anytime you make a list like this, it goes without saying, this is my personal preference. These are my favorite John Carpenter movies, but I want to hear your favorite John Carpenter movies down below. Uh, give me some movies that you think are overrated or underrated too, because I think we're all probably, probably going to have the same top two. Although I know a few people that have some others in their top two. Uh, that being said, a couple of these movies, I'm embarrassed to say, I'm going to tell you which ones were first time watches for me in the last two weeks. They've been on my list for a while and I never got around to it. And I said, you know what? I got to get through Carpenter's filmography. So I watched these two and they both made the cut. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it at number 10. Number 10 for me is going to be my most recent watch last night, actually. And that is going to be in the Mouth of Madness, starring Sam Neill. So this is an interesting movie. Um, I have no nostalgia for this, because like I said, last, time, last night was the first time I watched this, and I'm very mixed on it. Um, I think it's good. It basically follows Sam Neill as an insurance investigator, and he's uh, tasked with finding a Stephen King-like writer who is causing all kinds of mass hysteria, and you know, bringing apart the bringing upon you know the end of the world and shit like that. And it's a fascinating, fascinating movie. Um, like most of the movies on this list, you know, you could say it for all this. It's very Carpenter, right? You know, it's got a lot of uh, Lovecrafty and monsters, and just the whole story and the way it's shot, and you know, the mystery and ending behind it uh, are really, really well done. All that being said, I didn't quite buy it. Uh, and what I mean by that, I'm not going to ruin it for you because there's, you know, some twists and turns in here. I don't want to ruin it for you, but what they did with this, they didn't go far enough to make me convinced that the lead character, Sam Neill, uh, has this turn. And I don't know what it was. I can't put my finger on it, but I wish they just would have went a step further and I would have bought it. Uh, all that being said, like I said, there's a lot of great imagery in here. There's some creepy fucking scenes. There's a really creepy scene involving, you know, this photograph that keeps changing. Uh, really eerie. Um, and it's kind of a mind bender. There's a, uh, you know, the ending is very uh, left open for interpretation, which you get with a lot of Carpenter movies, which I love. Uh, but like I said, I just didn't buy into it completely. And I don't know why. And that little part of it drops it all the way to number 10 for me. Uh, but that being said, you know, the movies ahead of this are all very, very good movies. So for me, In the Mouth of Madness, very good. Came out in uh, the early 90s, right after Jurassic Park, um, but it couldn't jump any higher because it just was missing one little element that I can't put my finger on. Let's go to number nine. Uh, number nine is actually going to be a movie that I think is John Carpenter's most overrated movie. Relax. I'm, I'd still like this movie. It's at number nine on my list. But the movie I'm talking about is Escape from New York. Yes. Uh, this is a very cool movie. Um, I just think that it's a little bit overrated. Um, it's got the us Carpenter Usuals and Kurt Russell, Donald Pleasant. Um, what, there's Marion Chambers from Halloween. You know, there's all kinds of Carpenter alum in here. Um, and essentially this is uh, uh, a prisoner, Snake Plissken who is sent to rescue the president whose plane crashed in New York City, which is now a prison. 
the whole city's a fucking prison with you know the worst of the worst and he's got to go in there and find it and the reason this makes a top 10 is one reason only and that is kurt fucking russell russell's performance of snake plissken who is one of the coolest characters in cinema that saves this movie for me i love kurt russell and i think he has a lot of fun in this and you know Carpenter's great, you know, in all his movies, you know, with the score and, you know, the world building, and this movie's no exception. I just don't think it's as good as people say it is. So that's why it's at number nine for me, but I still like it. Moving up to number eight is my other first time watch from the last two weeks. I actually just watched this on Sunday, so um, as I'm filming this on Saturday morning, watch it on Sunday, so I watched it six days ago, and I really, really dig it. I'm talking about John Carpenter's Vampires which came out in, I believe, 1998. It stars James Wood as a badass vampire hunter, uh, Jack Crow, another one of Carpenter's characters who's just a cool fucking character. And I, I just liked this movie a lot. Is, are there issues with this movie? Yes, there's plenty of issues with this movie, but it is a fun Western involving vampire hunters. It's got a great villain played by uh, Terry Silver from Cobra Kai and Karate Kid. Uh, he plays a badass vampire, the first vampire. And what I love about this movie is, like I said, it's a Western uh, set in uh, the Southwest where uh, Jack Crow and his team, which get wiped out pretty early, by the way, uh, but Jack Crow and his team are hunting these vampires and it's very brutal. There's just a lot of badass, brutal shots. Uh, Jack Crow is a take no nonsense guy. It is not a normal James Wood character, uh, but I buy it and it's great. And it's essentially a Western. Um, and just the whole world building and the fact that the Catholic Church is involved um, hiring these groups of vampire hunters. I love that aspect of it. Uh, I did call the twist at the end. There's a little twist of people that are involved in this. I kind of called it, um, but uh, the cinematography and the score and everything is so good. Um, Jack Crow is such a fun character. This jumped up to number eight on my list right off the bat. Coming in at number seven is going to be another Kurt Russell movie, Big Trouble in Little China. Uh, this movie's fun as hell. Uh, you got Kurt Russell playing the hero and he's only the hero in his mind. He keeps fucking shit up, right? Uh, David Dunn's character, is that his name? David Dunn uh, is the real hero of this, but we're following Kurt Russell. He's a truck driver and he just gets in over his head involved in this crazy, crazy plot that's happening in Chinatown in I believe San Francisco. And there's all kinds of different monsters and shit and Lopan is a fucking great villain. Uh, it's just shenanigans. It's fun. It's Kurt Russell playing an off-brand, goofy-type character, and it just works. Uh, there's a reason why this movie became a cult classic, uh, because it's a fun movie. So Big Trouble in Middle China is my number seven. Let's get to number six. My number six is going to be They Live. Uh, I believe this was 88. I, I stand to be corrected on that. Uh, but this is a movie that I think is more relevant today than when it came out. Uh, is it cheesy? Is it schlocky? Yes and yes, big time. But another movie that just works. It is fun with Rowdy Piper, R.I.P., and Keith David, who we're going to be talking about again later on in this list. Uh, they really make this movie work and the world building and the aliens and everything that goes on where, you know, we're just told to obey, to follow orders, you know, through this subliminal messaging. Um, but the aliens are the ones doing it. And it's just a great take on consumerism and, you know, what was going on at the time with Reagan and all kinds of shit. Uh, it is an excellent movie. And like I said, it is more relevant today, especially as, you know, corporations might have changed to pharmaceutical companies and all kinds of shit like that. Uh, after what happened in 2020, in my opinion, uh, you know, this movie is a lot more relevant today. And it's another movie that's that's fun, you know. It's gotten more of another kind of a eh, little bit of a Western feel to it. And it might have the most ridiculous but fun fight scene in cinematic history between Rowdy Piper and Keith David. It is absolutely bonkers. Uh, so they live at number six. Coming in at number five is going to be what I think is the most underrated Carpenter movie. Hands down. I think every other movie gets its due for the most part. Uh, I'm talking about Prince of Darkness. 
huge fan of this movie. I finally saw it for the first time uh, a couple of years ago, and I've seen it a few times since. And it it is really eerie. It is really creepy. The score is amazing. Uh, all the performance by the cast is amazing. You got Donald Pleasance playing a priest, um, and he hires these scientists or this uh, these scientists from this uh, school to come investigate. And I quote: "Basically, Satan is discovered in liquid form under some old church." And yeah, I know that sounds ridiculous, and it is ridiculous. Uh, but the movie's just got an eerie vibe to it. You know, there's these dream sequences that are some of the scariest shit Carpenter's ever shot, uh, which is saying something for this guy. And it's just uh, a batshit crazy, balls to the wall, uh, scary, creepy Carpenter movie. Um, and it does its job. I know there's people that think it's a little boring in parts. I don't. Um, I, I'm all in and invested in the story of this movie. You know, when they're reading the Bible, when they're, when they're figuring out what's going on here, and you got uh, faith and science and, you know, the battle between that uh, going on. And it, it is great. And like I said, it's some of the creepiest imagery, some of the creepiest shit that Carpenter's ever done. If you haven't seen Prince of Darkness, I would encourage you to go see it. It is the second movie in Carpenter's kind of apocalypse trilogy. Um, right in between The Thing and uh, In the Mouth of Madness, and it is fantastic. So The Prince of Darkness is at number five. Number four is going to be Christine. We got John Carpenter adapting a Stephen King movie, and that's basically all you need to know. Um, an evil car, right? Uh, is it 57 Plymouth? I can't remember what it is. Um, but essentially, Arnie Cunningham, this nerd, gets... Uh, enamored with this car and it changes him it absolutely changes him he becomes the villain and it's all this car is doing he is basically possessed by this car and it, there's some great practical effects in this with the car rebuilding itself um, the score is up there you know with some of carpenter's best work and you know you can say that with a lot of these movies um he's such, carpenter's so good at the score um but but christine is a great great movie it's so early 80s uh like I said, you can tell it's a Stephen King movie, and you can also tell it's a John Carpenter movie, which is really cool that we are able to get those two, um, those two aspects of something combined like that. Uh, so I'm a big fan of Christine, always have been, um, and it, I think it's aged really well, uh, especially those practical effects. They're, they're fucking incredible. All right, top three, people. My number three is going to be The Fog. Uh, this is one of the best ghost stories I've ever seen. You know, it's essentially this town in Antonio Bay, uh, Northern California, I believe, um, where a hundred years ago they killed all these pirates or something. They killed they killed all these uh, colonizers or pirates or something like that, and they are coming back for revenge a hundred years later on the hundred year anniversary of this town's creation. And uh, you know, this talk about Carpenter alums. You know, like Halloween alums. You got Jamie Lee Curtis. You got Tom Atkins. You got Charles Cyphers. You got. Um, chick that plays Annie Brackett in Halloween. Uh, you got Janet Lee in this movie. Um, and it is a great, great movie. Um, you know, there's a great story with uh, Father Malone, I believe his name is, where he discovers what has happened, what happened 100 years ago. And um, Adrian Barbeau, uh, who Carpenter married after this, is probably uh, the highlight of this movie as she's, you know, in the radio tower and the lighthouse and the fog is coming in and she's warning the town. And these ghost creatures are in the fog and they are coming to get the revenge uh, and it is just beautifully shot another fantastic score you know I'm a broken record here saying that but uh, the fog is uh, my third favorite John Carpenter movie and now we move to the top two I think you know what they are if you've uh, done the process of elimination this was tough for me you know on one hand you got my favorite on the other hand you got what I think is probably his best work um, my number two, guys, is it's going to be The Thing. 1982, oops, sorry, <laughs> gave away number one, shocker. Uh, but uh, it's The Thing. I don't know what I can say about these first top two that I haven't said at nauseum. I've made countless videos, uh, especially on number one, but I've made countless videos on The Thing, too. I've talked about it in live streams. Uh, the Thing is Carpenter's best work. It's so unfortunate that it didn't get the... Uh, uh, didn't get its due when it came out 
for various reasons, you know, ET and other things, but it didn't get its due, and that really soured Carpenter, um, and I think it really affected uh, his work for the rest of his life, you know, uh, things he chose to do and, and not do specifically um, were because of the critical reaction to the thing. Uh, but some of the best special effects, in my opinion, the best practical effects ever done, uh, the best version of, you know, capturing the paranoia, um, you know, at this outpost in Antarctica, there's nowhere to go, they're, they're trapped in the cold, and there's this thing assimilating and taking control of all of them, and they don't know who is real and who has, is the thing. And it, it's on and on and on, uh, just perfection. And, you know, I love the ending where we don't know if Kurt Russell or Keith David are the thing. Is one of them, them the thing? Are both of them the thing? Are none of them the thing? Uh, for me personally, I like to think neither of them are the thing, but they're going to kill each other anyway because they don't trust each other. All kinds of different theories out there. Uh, the thing is fucking great. Um, nothing more I can say about that. Speaking of things, pun intended, that I can't really say much more about, you guys know my number one. It's Halloween. Uh, like I said, I think The Thing is the better overall movie, but Halloween is my favorite horror movie of all time. Look behind me. You know I've got a little bit of a Halloween obsession. If you followed my channel, uh, you know I've made numerous Halloween videos, you know, probably in the hundreds. Uh, this is the movie that got me into movies. Absolutely 100%. If it wasn't for seeing Halloween at a young age, I would not have this channel. I would not be obsessed with movies and breaking movies down and talking about theories and all kinds of shit. This movie is, you know, uh, started my obsession with movies. And part of me hates that because, you know, I've spent a lot of money on this shit and it takes up a lot of time and all kinds of that, things like that. But for the most part, uh, I love that this movie did that to me. I love that it made me feel the fear that I had. Um, and I'll just say this, Michael Myers, in this original movie is never scarier. He is not the most brutal in this movie. Uh, he is not the strongest. He is not, you know, um, breaking guys in half, lifting up cars, but he is the creepiest. And that's because of what Carpenter did, the way he shot him, you know, from a distance at the daytime, uh, like a storm is brewing. And then slowly he is, you know, in the background of all these scenes, you got Loomis's dialogue uh, that's telling us all we need to know. Jamie Lee Curtis's performance, uh, everything about this movie made me fall in love with movies. Um, so thank you, John Carpenter, for uh, giving me this obsession. Um, so yeah, that is my top 10 favorite John Carpenter movies. Tell me down in the comments, guys, your favorites down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.